Hi class, today we're going to continue with solving our equations. However, this time we're going to take the five steps we had in the last video and turn them into six. Notice that I've added in a new step two and then shifted all the other steps down. The new step two is something that will make it so problems such as this one here are much easier. It's going to help you deal with problems that have fractions in them. And that new step two, you'll notice, is to multiply everything by the common denominator. What that's going to do for us is take an equation like this one and eliminate all the fractions to make the problem much easier for you to deal with. You still want to go through all the same steps, you just want to make sure sure that after you have simplified, you multiply by the least common denominator and that will make your problem much easier. It is also very important that when we get to step number three and you try that, that you don't skip any steps and that you are very careful to copy everything down and write it out um, in the manner that I show you. It's very easy to make a mistake in that section and you want to try and avoid those if at all possible. Now the first step you always want to do is to simplify both sides if possible. Notice in this particular equation that this side does not have like terms so we can't combine them and same with this side. So that step number one for this equation is complete. So we're going to go to step number two which is our new step and we're going to multiply everything by the common denominator. So we need to take a look at the denominators. We have a five a 2 and a 6. The smallest thing that all of those divide into happens to be 30. So what we're going to do is multiply the entire equation, the whole thing here, by 30. Now it's very important when you multiply by this common denominator that in this next step you're going to distribute the 30 across the equation and you're going to just write it down. We will actually come back and do the multiplication and that will make it much easier for us. So I'm just going to distribute and write down 30 times x over 5 minus now 30 times the next one which is 30 times 1 over 2 equals and then 30 times the x over 6. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and multiply. And the reason why I'm going to do that afterwards is because you want to think of this 30 as being over 1 here. And same with all these others. When we multiply fractions we want to cross cancel. And so this 5 goes into this 30 six times. And so dividing the 30 by 5 you get 6, dividing the 5 by 5 you get 1. And now notice that all we have are 1's on the denominators here and you don't need to write those. So if we multiply the 6 times the x, we just have 6x for that term now. Notice the fraction is gone. The same thing happens in the next one. 2 goes into 2 once and into 30 15 times. Notice you just have 1's on the bottom here, so now 15 times 1 is 15. That fraction is now gone. On the next um, situation that we have here, 6 goes into 6 once and into 30 five times. So now we have 5 times x, which is 5x. Now we have an equation here that has all the fractions eliminated and it's much, much easier to deal with. So then we move on to our next step, step three. If you have variables on one side, you need to move uh, the variables so that they're on the same side. And notice I have a 6x here and a 5x over here. So I need to move them to one side. I'm going to go ahead and move this 5x to the other side just because I prefer to have um, my variables on the left hand side. It really doesn't matter. So to do that I'm going to add a negative 5x to both sides because that will make my x's disappear on the right hand side. So I'm going to insert my negative 5x next to my like terms here. Over here, these cancel and they leave you with zero. So this side of the equation actually has a zero. On this other side, 6x and negative 5x makes just 1x. Now, 
I have my variables on one side, so I move on to the next step. Step four, it says to move any items being added or subtracted. And we have a minus 15 here. The opposite of that would be to add 15 to both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and add 15 to both sides. These 15's cancel, and I'm left with x equals 15. Now, I have completed my um, problem because there's nothing being multiplied by my um, x, so x should be 15. However, step six is to check your answer. We always need to do that. So we're going to go all the way back to this original equation that we had right here, and we're going to plug in that 15 and see if it actually works, and that will tell us if we did everything correct or not. So, we believe x is 15. Let's plug it in and see if it works. We will plug in 15 right here because that's where our x is, and we will also plug in a 15 here because there's another x there. Oops, that was a 6 under there. Now, over here, notice that um, we can actually divide 15 by 5, and that gives us 3. Over here, I can't divide 15 by 6, but I can reduce this. I can divide the top and the bottom by 3 because that's a common divisor. And that's going to give me 5 over 2. Now on this other side, this 3 is really over 1 and I need common denominators. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom here by 2. And that gives me 6 over 2 minus 1 over 2. And that does give me five halves, so notice that this does check out, so we would say that the solution is this 15 right here. Let's do one more of those, and then I'll also show you how you can do the same kind of thing to eliminate decimals if you don't want decimals. Our next problem that we're going to deal with is one that uh, looks a little bit um, harder, however, it's going to be very similar to what we just did. So this one is x minus 3 over 5 minus 1 equals x minus 5 over 4. Now, this looks a little bit harder, but we're going to deal with it in the same manner we dealt with the last ones. So first, we're going to see if there's anything we can simplify. And over here we have our fraction and we have a number, and we can't combine those right now. And here we just have a fraction. So step one, we can't do anything. We might have to simplify later, but right now we can't simplify anything. So we're going to multiply by the least common denominator, which we have a 5 and a 4, and the common denominator for that would be a 20. So we're going to multiply everything by 20. And again, it's very important to just distribute this 20, write it down, and come back to do um, your work. So I'm going to distribute the 20 to this x minus 3 over 5. I'll come back and multiply a little bit later. And then distribute the 20 to the 1, and then distribute the 20 to the x minus 5 over 4. Now, we're going to go back and recognize that this 20 is over 1. So if we cross cancel, 5 goes into 20 four times. So this becomes 4 times x minus 3. Notice I'm going to have to distribute that to continue with the problem. Here, 20 times 1 is just 20. And then over here, this 20 is over 1, and 4 goes into 20 five times. So this is 5 times x minus 5. Notice I'm going to have to come back and distribute that. So now let's simplify. We get 4x minus 12 minus 20 equals 5x minus 25. Now combine our like terms here, and we have 4x minus 32 equals 5x minus 25. Now, I notice that 
if I move, I've been moving everything to the left hand side, but if I move this 4x here to the other side, my x's will stay positive. So for this next step, number 3, here, I'm going to actually move my 4x by adding the opposite of it, which is the negative 4x. So let's go ahead and subtract 4x or add a negative 4x to both sides. These cancel and I'm going to move things a little bit, give myself a little room, and then go up here for my next step. So I'm left with negative 32 equals 5x minus 4x is just 1x, and then I have a minus 25. Now I need to move the minus 25, which would be our step number 4, to move anything being added or subtracted. The opposite of this negative 25 is a positive 25. So let's add a positive 25 to both sides. These cancel, and we're just left with an x. And then on the other side, negative 32 and positive 25 is negative 7. So I believe that negative 7 is probably going to be our solution. Let's double check and make sure that that's really the case. To do that, we're going to have to go back to this original equation that we had here, which was way up here and looked like that. And we're going to have to plug in that negative 7 into that. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we come up with. The x right here will be replaced with a negative 7. And then on the other side, this x will also be replaced with a negative 7. And we'll see if it works. Over here, combining these, we get negative 10 over 5. Oops minus 1, and negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2, minus 1 is negative 3. We hope that on the other side we get the same thing. Negative 7 and negative 5 is negative 12, and whoops, it's a 4 under there. And when you divide negative 12 by 4, you get negative 3. So it looks like this checked out just fine. So we would say the solution is negative 7. Now, that's how you deal with fractions, and I strongly suggest doing this new step that we added in right here for every problem that has fractions. Now, when you have decimals, you can do a similar thing um, by multiplying by 10 or 100 or 1,000, depending on how many decimal places you have, in order to make your problem so it doesn't have any decimals. And you would do that at the same spot that you would multiply by your least common denominator, as we did in these last two problems. Now, if you're allowed to use a calculator, um, the decimals aren't as big of a deal to, de to you deal with in your problem as the fractions. So you can eliminate your decimals if you want, doing this same step here, but multiplying by 10 or 100, depending on how many decimal places you have. However, it's not completely necessary um, if you're allowed to use a calculator for your problem. If you're not allowed to use a calculator, it will help um, quite a bit in doing your problem. Let's take a look at how doing something very similar to that common denominator, but instead dealing with uh, multiples of 10 will help you to make a problem with decimals just a little bit easier to deal with. So let's say that you had a problem that was something like this one. Let's say you had 0.05x uh, minus 3.5 equals 0.15x plus 
and you were asked to solve this. Now, because we have calculators and decimals aren't normally as hard to deal with for a lot of people as fractions are, we could just do this problem and ignore our new step that we put in here. Or we could utilize this new step in a modified manner to eliminate our um, decimals. Now, let's step check step number one and over here there's nothing we can do we have a term with an X and a term without so they're not like terms and there's no distribution over here same thing happens so step number one for this problem is complete now step number two if we use it in a, a slightly modified manner what you do when you have decimals is you check to see how many decimal places you have I have two here one here two here and one there the most number of decimal places that you have will tell you what multiple of 10 you're going to use. So um, since we have two decimals here, we're going to do 10 times 10, which is 100, because each time you multiply by 10, it's going to move the decimal over. If we only had one like this one for our most number of decimal places, we would multiply by 10. But since any one of these terms has more than one decimal place, we're going to multiply by 100 because two decimal places is 100. If any of these had three decimals, three items after the decimal, then you would multiply by 1,000. If there were four, you'd multiply by 10,000. You just add a zero on for each decimal place, and you always look for the most decimal places places that you have, or most values you have after the decimal place. And 2 is what we have, so we're going to multiply by 100. If we multiply by 100, what you have is 100 times this becomes 5x. 100 times this becomes 350, because multiplying by 100 just moves the decimal over two places. And then 100 times this becomes 15x, and 100 times this becomes 250. Notice every single item just had its decimal place moved over two places because the 100 has two zeros here. Now we continue with our steps as normal. So we want to make sure our variables are on one side, and they aren't. So I'm going to move them to the left-hand side. I'm going to move this 15x to the left side. I'm going to do that by adding the opposite, which is a negative 15x. So I'm going to have 5x, and then I'm going to insert my negative 15x. And then on the other side, I also have to insert my negative 15x, so I keep my equation balanced. These cancel to make 0, so all that's left over here is a 250. Over here, combining these, we get a negative 10x. Now we need to move, do our step number 4, which is to move anything being added or subtracted. And we're subtracting 350. The opposite of that would be to add 350. So I'm going to add 350 to both sides. I'm going to add it in next to its like term there, and then also next to its like term over here. These cancel because one's negative and one's positive, so we have a negative 10x equals, and on this side here, if I combine those two, I end up with 600. So now we are ready for our step number five here, which is to move anything multiplied or divided. And we are multiplying by a negative 10, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 10. And that gives us a solution that we believe is correct, that is x equals negative 60. Now, we have to go ahead and do our last step, which is to check that answer. So let's go ahead and erase a few things so we have some room. And we're going to take our negative 60 all the way back to the oops, original equation and plug it in everywhere we see an x. So negative 60 needs to be replaced right here and right here. So 
we're going to insert it right here. And right here. Now we're going to go back and we're going to um, multiply. And so multiplying right here, we're going to have um, negative 0.5 times negative 60. And that is going to end up being negative 3. And um, you can do that in your head by thinking this is 5%. And 10% of 60 would be 6. And 5% is half a 10%. And half a 6 is 3. So if you want to know a neat way to do that in your head, that's a way to do that in your head. Over here, we're going to go ahead and multiply these. And 15.15 times negative 60, again, you can do a similar thing. That's 10% plus 5%, which is going to be 10% is um, negative 6. And adding another half of that on, you get negative 9. So that's a little trick for you if you want that. And then over here, combining these is negative 6.5. And then over here, if I combine the negative 9 and the positive 2.5, that is also negative 6.5. So notice that for this problem, our solution of negative 60 checks out because that worked. So we would say the solution is negative 60. So this gives you some tools for how to deal with problems that have fractions and decimals. And so you can tackle those, and when you're done with those, you're ready to try um, solving some inequalities, which will be our next video.